I'm Abhi Seeth, and you're listening to Connected by Imparticle, where we interview the people that help create some of the most beloved brands in the world. These folks have a unique ability to bring together seemingly unrelated people and technologies to deliver some truly amazing results. What's the key to building a great loyalty program? And what can restaurants learn from retail on improving guest experiences? Join me as I sit down with Kevin Fitzpatrick, Senior Vice President of Marketing at Ruby Tuesdays. As we dive into these questions, and Kevin shares his wealth of knowledge from working with some of the most iconic brands of the 21st century. Mr. Kevin Fitzpatrick, thank you so much for, uh, for making the time to jump on the pod. Thanks for having me, Abby. Yeah. So, I mean, to give the guests a little, a little bit of background, I know, you know, we go back quite a ways, but uh, I always like to start off with the obvious question, right? I'd, I'd love to hear a little bit more uh, about yourself and, uh, and what you do. Okay. Um, about myself. So uh, I am currently the SVP of digital marketing at Ruby Tuesday, uh, a restaurant that's primarily kind of mid to, to East Coast. Uh, we've been around for 50 years, and uh, and we're going to be around for 50 more. Uh, so, uh, you know, if I if I think about my background and what, what kind of got me here, I've got one of those kind of weird backgrounds. Uh, we've talked about this in the past, Avi, but I started out in finance. I actually majored in economics, got my MBA in finance. And usually the first question I get is, what the heck is a uh, finance guy doing in a, in a marketing role? You know, and, and it's interesting because a lot of the roles that I took on early in my career were around building financial models, um, which are, you know, basically predicting customer behavior from the finance side of it all, right? And so the transition to marketing is just putting myself on the other side of that financial model, you know, just not, not what are the inputs, it's now it's what are the stimulus to drive the inputs of that financial model um, and understand the consumer behavior it takes to drive, you know, some of those, those predictions and whatnot. Um, but I think a lot of my transition started in uh, when I worked at Blockbuster Video. Um, you know, everyone's, you know, kind of makes fun of me. I got to, I got to ride that sinking ship. Uh, at, at the time it was sinking, but, but it was also one of the best places to work back in the, the kind of the late 2000s uh, where, you know, we're, we're all talking as, as organizations and especially marketing organizations, like how do I know more about my customer? Yeah, and use that information to create better business outcomes and, and better guest experiences. And back in the late 2000s, I mean, we had perfect data. You had a membership card. To, I mean, we captured your yep. social security number and we saw every <laughs> single you know, video that you've rented. You knew exactly what your tastes were and, and, and how often you showed up and when you bought food. I mean, like we captured like so much of that customer data that went into financial modeling and from my perspective, but it was a view and insight into the guest, which is huge. And so that's where like I, I, my career kind of transitioned more into strategy and loyalty um, where my, my financial model building and, and report design began, became into more strategy. And, and again, how do you impact uh, a, a customer experience and, and understand their behaviors and how do you drive them? So I spent uh, probably the last decade plus in, in loyalty where if you're working for loyalty, uh, Briley and Partners, a loyalty agency, uh, designing programs and design, you know, figuring out the outcomes and, uh, I worked a lot with GameStop as one of my clients and eventually got absorbed into that uh, and did a lot of strategy work for them, uh, promotional marketing, supporting game launches. And, you know, that was a fantastic place to be as well. Uh, I love going to game shows, you know, and seeing all the cool stuff coming out ahead of time. Um, you know, I don't know, the thing I, I, I like to say or brag about, uh, I got to play a Nintendo Switch about six months before anyone got to see it. Uh, I had one. I had a Super demo jealous. unit. Uh, I mean, it's like, you know, I tell my kids that and they're like, we don't care. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it, it was a great experience. I uh, ended up running the Power Up Rewards program, helped kind of uh, try to evolve that. And then found myself at Dave & Buster's, uh, which is a really unique business trying to connect uh, multiple businesses, you know, in, in one, you know, one experience. And how do you create, you know, a, a good guest experience and understand guests and create the, the connecting fabric of, you know, where do you connect data and what do you do with it? And yeah, so now I'm here at Ruby's to kind of build up that, that framework and foundation for how do we understand our customer, which is, which is a really hard thing to do 
in a restaurant space when, you know, in retail, oh man, it, it is, I swear my next job's in retail. You know, where, <laughs> you know, I've got somebody behind a register and it's like, hey, put in your number, you know, and, and it's good to go. Uh, I mean, you know, the, the tracking of, uh, of, of transactions to a guest is, you know, upwards in the 60, 70%. You know, yep. you go back to a restaurant, you're lucky if you can get 10%. And, and a lot yep. of that is just because that that connective framework and the technology isn't there to seamlessly get that that form of attribution, that login. And and and, and at Ruby Tuesday, you know, we're just like Dave and Buster's, you know, the POS was across the restaurant, you know. <laughs> so what do you do, you know, and how do you learn and understand your guests better? And, and there's there's partners out there that we're working with uh, to give us insight. And, and, and it's interesting to kind of see you know, this, this 50 year old brand, how, how we're doing some actually pretty advanced things um, sure. and driving some additional segmentation where, where we're trying to go. Uh, it's, it's pretty exciting. So that was a really the long answer to who am I outside of that? I like mountain biking um, and playing with my kids. You know, when I say like mountain biking, it's, it's in the garage. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I didn't know about the mountain biking thing. You know, this this is 18. I'll, I'll you know, maybe, maybe we'll we'll brush off both our mountain bikes and do there something. There you go. But yeah. uh, no, I mean, Kevin, I, I, I actually loved sort of the way you you shared your career journey. And I think there's oh, there's so many questions I want to ask you. But yeah, sure. Look, Blockbuster, everyone wants to sort of, you know, joke and laugh about that. But that point that you made about um loyalty and guest experience and people forget like blockbuster was actually an amazing company right i mean okay we can yeah. talk about the changes of uh, technologies and your ability to adapt and you know that's something that uh we'll get into as well but if we think about just from a digital marketing perspective holistically today um and i'm really interested to get your thoughts on this just because you have worked with so many organizations that maybe have been traditionally brick and mortar um, that saw a real need uh, to move digital. What are some of the, um, you know, perhaps opportunities and in fact advantages that maybe a brick and mortar brand has over like a digital native brand, um, you know, when building, uh, yeah, marketing program? Yeah, I mean, part of it is, I think the, the restaurant industry just in particular, um, is trying to learn from retail, you know, and, and part of the, the advantages of retail in, in a lot of cases, and it depends on who you are. Um, but, um, like I think of like a Best Buy or a Target, you know, or, you know, places that are true, like Omnichannel and they, they have a lot of products, um, or even at GameStop, it was, it was great because you always had something to talk about, right? You always had a new game coming out. So you always have a new, new, uh, brand of kitty litter being introduced. I'm just making things up. But it's like you always had a, a product as, as a driver for you know what what you know what would drive a guest action, and you had enough variety in a lot of cases of of what they bought, so you got a little bit of understanding on, on what they what they do. Um, you know, like in the restaurant industry, it's you you, you kind of just have a, a set menu to to an extent, you know, and and what do you eat? Um, what are what is the makeup of the, the number of dishes you have? Um, and how can you use that to understand a guest better to drive better action? You know, so like the things that we're digging into now is a lot of the things that that I was trying to set up or we did set up with uh, with when I integrated uh, M Particle at Dave and Buster's, where it's like I, I want that customer record, I want that 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 list of attributes. You know, there, there's you know those attributes that are those like propensity scores and RFM scores and things like that, but sometimes there's things that you can execute are like, do they do these things? You know, a yes, no, a binary answer, you know, like, is this person a lunch person? Is this person a dinner person? You know, and understanding the differences be between those kind of give you, you know, two opportunities. So I'll just put it back in the context of like, like lunch. Like right now we're, we're running daily lunch specials. I'm telling everybody about it. Right. But if you only ever visit us for dinner, um, are, you know, what's, what's your likelihood you're going to action on that, on that email, that off, right? And, and look at it two ways. One is I'm trying, you know, I could look at that as, hey, you're a dinner person. How can I get you to eat lunch here? But sometimes that's just not how you use the brand and, you know, it's falling on deaf ears. And so if I keep communicating lunch specials, um, I might lose that person, you know, because it's just not relevant to them or they're not acting. And I could be driving an extra visit if I suddenly turned that and started talking about what dinner specials I have. 
Um, I also had a, a, a learning, like when you talk about just, just you know, using data, um, you know, uh, I'm actually forgetting what the question was originally, but I'm going to keep going. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, it's kind of understanding what the guests like and, and what drives them in is what we're all trying to figure out. Uh, I had an old boss at GameStop for a short period of time um, who was, uh, was part of the initial Panera program where it was kind of surprise and delight. And they would look at what you bought uh, based on, you know, you, you telling you who you are and they would try to get you to, to get in the categories that you wouldn't normally do. Right. So like mm. you come in, you get a chicken sandwich all the time, eat this roast beef sandwich or, or here's, here's a soup. You know, and, and the redemptions were, were not great. Like, you know, it's like, you know, what they found out was, well, if, if you're here eating a chicken sandwich all the time, what's going to get you in the door is a chicken sandwich. You know, that, that what you like, what you do. And, and, and that's kind of like how loyalty in the space in general has evolved from kind of the 2000s to, to now. You know, it's 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 not just putting a rewards mechanism in place where uh, back in late 2000s, it was unique. I, I consolidate my spend here. I get money back. And it's a you do this, I get this. And and I think where it's evolving, it's it's becoming more experiential, more status driven uh, The rewards. Uh, the payback is getting higher because it's just a much more competitive space. But it is kind of understanding and responding to those behaviors of, you know, Kevin's a chicken sandwich guy. I can drive his behavior and get him back in with a chicken sandwich. And now what can I do incrementally to try to enhance attach, drive him in other days? He's not only in there, you know, increase his, uh, his, his visit cadence and, and things like that. And, and, yeah, you know, and a lot of that is understanding not just frequency and how much he spends, which is loyalty of old, you know, let's focus on the whales, but understanding on the, on the individual level, what drives Kevin. And, yeah. and that's that's how the focus is shifting. Like like a lot of uh, a lot of my focus that that I'm I'm, I'm trying to apply right now is look at you know uh, look at things from a couple of different places you know using you know using data. And some of that is you know how do you provide a macro view uh, and apply that to to your store base. Like this store is in a business park. It primarily does lunch, um, and when work is out of hours, that store doesn't do any business. You know, so yeah, it's like yeah, yeah, you know yeah. when you, so when you start thinking about promotions like. I'm going to have a date night promotion. Cool. Don't market it at this store. It's not going to work. You know, it's it sure. just, it's just not. And, and, you know, like a lot of places don't classify stores and understand those stores enough in the, in the demographic and the people around it, where they live and, and, and how they use that store that, that you can use to impact and influence um, media plans and things like that. Then, then on the other side, there's, there's the micro, you know, yep. I'm a chicken sandwich guy. I'm a lunch guy. I'm a dinner guy. Uh, whenever I visit, I'm also ordering kid entrees, you know, right. that's, that's extremely important when you start talking about imagery and, and things like that. If, if there's only ever two entrees in my, uh, in, in my, on my check and there's alcohol purchase, you know, I, I have a reason to assume that, you know, maybe you fit into a, a, a certain demographic range. And if I start showing you family pictures, it's really going to turn you off. That, that was something at Dave and Buster's we were, we were really conscious of. I, I don't want to show UFC fights. Uh, and invite, you know, the mom who visits on Wednesday mornings with her kids, she's never going to come to a UFC fight on Saturday and, and your response rate's terrible, your, your unsubscribes higher and, and you're not, you're not connecting with the guests because I think the expectation is there. You're just going to have to stop me, Abby. You just be like, no, okay, no, cool, no, 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 this is I, so many thoughts that I, I wanted you to let get all of that out because I think there's so much, uh, so much goodness there. <laughs> Here's my person, like of all the things you just said, when I think about brick and mortar experiences I go to, right? Like, in, you know, we talked about Dave and Buster's, GameStop, Ruby, G like these are oftentimes like some of the most beloved experience, like regardless of whether you know me or you're personalizing my experience, there, there's a base level of product or a nostalgia or sometimes a requirement, right? Like I can't eat a chicken sandwich over the internet. Like I have to go somewhere to buy <laughs> this thing and, yeah. you know, it's, it's a physical object. Um, right. But were well, you? Yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say it's interesting on, on that topic because I've I've got a, a, a well, I got a PFD on anything, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you know, when you think about loyalty, um, people are loyal to brands. Um, they're loyal to products. They're loyal to experiences. Um, they're not loyal to programs. Um, you know, right. and, and it, it's weird. Like, and and when I was at GameStop, we always had higher satisfaction rates with GameStop the brand than we did with the loyalty program. You know, and and it kind of comes down to uh, almost a reprogramming of that term. It's not a loyalty program. It's a rewards program. Like I'm asking you to say, this is me when you visit. And when you say, this is me, 
I'm going to give you stuff back for saying this is me. And the things I give you back are, you know, uh, are monetary rewards in a lot of cases, but it could also be access. It could be things that make your life easier. It could be, um, you know, customized offers that you are likely to respond to. So I can improve that guest experience. You know, that's also kind of one of the transitions of loyalty, you know, but, but it's, yeah, loyalty is just, it's just a rewards mechanism. That's all it is. But the brand loyalty, that's a different story. And that's where a guest experience is what matters the most, you know, yeah, because, yeah. you know, a, a lot of people like, like, oh man, what's your favorite rewards program? Like we go through this exercise all the time. And a lot of people say like Chick-fil-A, why is it your favorite loyalty program? Well, it's, you know, I get to order up my phone. It's easy. You know, the rewards are there and the rewards was the last thing they always mentioned. It's easy. You know, you go to Starbucks and this is always my example with Starbucks. Like, what's my favorite loyalty program? It's like, I like Starbucks, not because I earn stars. My wife has no idea what stars mean. I'm sitting on 600 of them. I could probably get free coffee for like, you know, several weeks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but what we like about it is it, it, it stores my payment method. Um, you know, that's unique. When I get new gift cards for Christmas, I add it to it. So I don't have to carry them with me. I don't forget them. I don't lose them. Um, I, uh, I can order from it. I don't have to wait in line. You know, it, it, it saves me time. You know, the, right, the concept right, behind right. that is they utilize the technology as as the rewarding entry point to save me time and make my life easier. You know, and by the way, you earn stars, right? Yep, and and, yep. and that's that's kind of how I view it. Other people are, yeah, I got free coffee, that's why I use it. Yeah. But but you kind of need to understand that the the role that an experience or the role that technology can play in helping drive uh you know a, a loyalty in a company. And honestly, I think that's the piece. Like if I look at, you know, the traditionally brick and mortar brands that are building a digital experience, so the ones that have built like the better digital experiences, it's, hey, we already have, you know, maybe a significant or a nice big group of loyal guests, but like, what else can we do to your point to almost just reduce the barriers of entry to like us, right? Like it's, how do we do more of the stuff that you actually the reason you're walking through the door in the first place, how yeah. do we kind of move away the noise of stuff that kind of turns you off? Like to your point, you know, yeah. it might be store specific. You're, you're exactly right. like in a business park, a date yeah. night service yeah. won't work, but all that comes into, I think, listening and the digital mechanisms of being able to listen to your guests. Well, I, I even have a, an analog example, right? Um, th this goes back to the Blockbuster days. I, I was on a uh, store optimization type task force. And one of the things that we did is we looked at the guest experience. I was on the guest experience team. And, you know, and I, I don't know if you're, you're uh, old enough to remember Blockbuster. Uh, I loved that experience. And I even told my wife a couple of weeks ago, it's like, I would love right now to take the kids, you know, it's a Friday night. I want to drive the kids over somewhere, pick out a few movies and, and just that experience of browsing everything that's available. Now it's on your TV and it's yeah, curated. Yeah. And it makes me mad. Yeah, I, I hate the Netflix experience. I, I, I detest it. I, I, I love the service. I love the access. I love how it saves me the time to drive. But I, but I, I miss out on the experience that that, that brick and mortar uh, thing brought to my life, right? But, but when, on that project that I was on, it was, where are the friction points? And you know, this is your typical journey mapping exercise. But um, I, I always use this as an example. I've, I've said this many times, but we, we were thinking about it. And it's like, back in the day, a movie would come out on Tuesday. That's the day they came out and people rented them on Tuesday. And, and a lot of times the terms of the rental, you know, it wanted it back by the weekend. So you can rent it out again. Cause that's when, that's when the traffic came. Right. Right. So I remember you get out of work, it's Friday night. You, you park in the, in, in the blockbuster. Actually, you know, you probably come screeching around the corner, drifting <laughs> into a spot, springing out of the car, you dart through the door and like the new men in black movie came out. You dart to the M's, you know, you just cut through half the store and get to the M's and okay, it's, it's, it's not here. It's not on the shelf. Well, you know, rats, you know, you might walk to the returns and see if it's there or just, okay, well, let me just see what else is here and I'll just walk to the end. And what you end up doing is you create a really stressful experience there um, unintentionally, right? Cause you've got limited supply um, and high demand for the new movies. Um, so high stress, um, you know, and uh, you also, uh, in some cases like that, if they're darting to the M's, then, then they're skipping half the store. You know, the N through Z's, they're missing those on, on, the, on the way. And they shop counterclockwise for some stupid reason at the Blockbuster. But um, well, at least the ones that I worked in. Yeah. But so, so we took that experience and said, well, well you know, and 
kind of what Netflix is doing, right? Their top tens. What if we what if we took the top 20 most rented videos and put that at the front of the door, right? You're here for these things. I know it. And I can take the stress out of your life because you're going to see is it in stock as soon as you come in or I put it in your hands, right? Um, and so it's again trying to trying to listen to the guests and, and take away where those pressure points are. And and what we found then is they got what they wanted right out of the gate. And, and by the way, here's now a curated list of 19 other things that are that everyone else in your stores rented. But um, and here's probably something that you know wasn't widely utilized back in the late 2000s is we literally did that by store. Every week we would run the top 20 by store, send a list, and they would curate that top 20 list every week by that store. So you were adjusting for demographics. It was fantastic. Right. Um, yeah, and tastes, you know, so like what, what would be on the top 20 in, you know, uh, Southeast Florida is going to be very different than, you know, California or uh, up in, you know, Chicago you know, or something like that. But, but what you ended up doing then is you drove actually more video attached because you didn't cut out half the store. They, they then had a more leisurely experience that was, you know, relaxing and they, they ended up renting more movies by taking the top 20 and putting it right here. So it was interesting, you know, um, and, and a lot of that was based on, you know, understanding how a customer views that guest experience, but then also starting to integrate some of the, the you know, the, the learnings and using, what, well, what are they renting? And, and, and that's, a, that's a macro view, right? What is renting at the store and applying that to help drive a better guest experience that actually resulted in more sales and potentially more customer loyalty because it wasn't stressful. I mean, you know, we all know where that ended up, but... Um, no, but I mean, well, I am not too young to remember the blockbusters. I think for me, it was uh, it was the Nintendo 64 games, right? Like I'd always yeah, go yeah. through and, you know, I'd, I'd jump straight to the, uh, you know, the game. But there was the the walking through the aisles. And, you know, I'm sure that was curious. I didn't think about it that way. I didn't realize at that time that yeah. there was actually someone that was thinking about, yeah, what were sort of the top sellers? What were the things that were being checked out? Um, yeah. You know, and... Uh, yeah, I guess where I was where I was going with that was, and this segues into the next thing I wanted to ask you. Um, I think it's clear there's an aesthetic, there's a feeling, there's an emotion of just doing certain things physically in person. And listen, I'm I am the biggest you know cheerleader of digital transformation and digital right. customer experience and all of that, but you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that that doesn't intersect with like the physical three-dimensional human world that we live in. And, 100%. you know, I think what at the core of what you said and the examples you provided, like what I took out of that is it's really like how seamlessly can you sort of integrate those two experiences? Because the more and more I look at it and my hunch on where the world's going is it's not so much like an either or. You know, it's not so much like, okay, cool. Like you have a brick and mortar presence. Like that doesn't mean you can't have a digital experience. Right. No, and it's right. And, and I think the other point is it's not necessarily about like forcing it either. It's like what makes sense for your business. So to your point on, you know, a restaurant and what makes sense for a digital presence for a restaurant to have versus a retail store and the types right. of emails and the types of loyalty programs you're building around that. Um, so I guess where I'm going with that, Kevin, is like, what are some of the opportunities and challenges of collecting and unifying all this data, right? Whether that's, you know, we talked about offline data, right? There's seriously, there's signals and touch points that are valuable to building that best in class loyalty program that are happening physically in a store, right? Those touch points are also happening online, you know, with your own owned websites and mobile apps and OTT devices now and that whole bit. Yeah. And then there's also like a whole sea of like third-party data, right? There's like demographic information and other data points that you can sort of like buy, fill in. Like, how do you, I guess, how do you navigate that? And yeah, what, what are, I'll let you take that wherever you want, but what are some of the biggest opportunities and challenges of, um, of tying all that data together? Um, yeah. I mean, technology is, is, you know, it is a piece, right? Um, it's also, you know, you, you want to make sure you're driving your strategies, you know, your your outcomes that you need, um, you know, because like like right now, you know, we're we're, just, we're still kind of feeling impact of you know kind of the recent resurgence of COVID. You know, I think everyone's kind of still is, um, except if you've got a drive-through, um, you know, but uh, you know, the, there's 
you know, a lot of the focus is like, you know, it just depends on the outcome you want to drive, right? How do I drive more traffic? And what do I need to drive more traffic? You know, and, and some of that is I need a deeper understanding of my guests. So I can go find out who are the best guests, um, the ones most likely to connect to a promotion, or if I'm promoting like a product, which ones are, are the ones consuming that product? Um, so I can go find more people like that, you know? Um, that's kind of the basis, you know, that, that we're chasing down. Um, and I think a, a lot of like what we were kind of doing at, at, at DMV, you know, we didn't get a chance to do enough of is understanding the customer journey and, and, and understanding how they navigate that, which I think is actually more important for, for businesses that are more omnichannel that have that online digital marketplace type experience, um, which for a restaurant, you know, that's, that's your Olo, you know, experience, your online ordering. Um, you know, and, and uh, how that connects to in-store and, and things like that. But I, I guess it, it's it's all about understanding and learning the guest, you know, and it's it's where are they, when are they, what are they doing, what channels do they engage in, um, what are they buying, how much are they spending, um, you know, and then, you know, what do they look like? Because, because you know, the demographics like family size, um, gender, when you think about, you know, who's the decision maker, you know, of the family, those kind of things matter uh, when you, when you're trying to pick who you want to target and reach out to, um, or right. just any cultural differences, you know, like uh, uh, at Dave and Buster's, you know, we, we would, we would have problems. Uh, we would do like a craft beer offer and try to, you know, and do it nationwide and understand, we can't understand why it doesn't sell well, you know, in the Washington DC market, but we do a liquor offer. It doesn't do well, you know, where I live in Frisco, but it does really well out in DC, yeah. you know, and a lot of that's demographic. So it's understanding a little bit about, you know, like what, what are they doing? And what are their tastes drive a lot of, you know, kind of that, you know, again, can, can drive some of the macro and micro ways you do things. Um, but again, it's about learning everything you can about a guest because that can be meaningful. So like example, mm. you know, like at Dave and Buster's, you've got a guest who's coming in the door and they're eating burgers and whatnot. But, um, you know, if you also can find out, are they browsing online? You know, and is this the same person? And what what food categories are they clicking on? Um, are they are they looking at what kid items are available? You know, and a lot of that can go into retargeting as well, where it's like, you know, in some cases, if you don't have that one-to-one attribution, they're not buying from you, but you understand what they're looking at and what's important to them, you know, that can drive retargeting efforts to say, hey, you, you were looking at this stuff, you know, retail uses this all the time, you know, well, retail kind of looks at it more like, hey, you looked at this, you want it, you yeah, know, which, yeah, right. which, which helps, you know, because, you know, it's, it's kind of recall or it's like, oh, you know, I decided not at the time, but yeah, it makes sense. Or here's your opportunity to, to take that content, what they're looking at, and maybe turn it, you know, position it side by side with an offer to drive that immediacy, to drive that action and, and, and whatnot. And so it's kind of like there's, there's different strategies that you can employ depending on where they're at and what they're doing um, that, I mean, the, the opportunities are kind of endless, you yeah, know, but, but yeah, it's also yeah. not just, don't just look at what they're buying. You know, it's, it's, what are they looking at? What are they browsing? How long are they spending in your stores? How many chairs come to the table? If I see them multiple times, is it the same size party? You know, um, it, are, are there certain times of the year where, you know, that, that guest check is plussed up? You know, is, is that a birthday occasion they're celebrating? You know, I mean, there's things you can infer um, and, and, and understand so that you can respond to the guests better is really what, it, you know, because you want to customize that experience. And I think that's kind of where, where the future and, and, and is going, digital is going, and where retail is, is colliding is everything shifting digital because they're, they're trying to curate an experience for you. You know, it's like uh, my wife goes shopping for clothes all the time and it's like, ah, nothing in this store is working. Okay, but if the store, in the context of the top 20, said, hey, you know, you've been here before I've seen you, here's all the things that I know you would like, you know, or, or you know, it, uh, I worked on, uh, worked with Express uh, back at the loyalty agency, and they were doing some things where it's like, you bought these pants, they would hit you back and say, hey, you bought those pants, people that bought those pants typically buy these shirts, sure, you know, sure. or, or it, these align with your style, and, and it kind of, kind of combines from that stitch fix, you know, type, uh, type well, mentality. And now you see that universally, like, there's no e-com retail yeah. store that doesn't do that. The right. recommended, like complete your basket with these other items. Right. So why can't you do that with a restaurant? You know? Yeah. Hey, yeah, you yeah. like this burger. Here's, here's a couple of things that you didn't try that I know you're going to love. And here's a reason to come back and you can tie an offer to that, you know, and, and, and that's, that's kind of the retail mentality, you know, the curation of, of the, the types of goods you'd expect at a retail, but then streamlining that retail experience to work well with that digital technology so that you're using it in store. Um, and, uh, you know, the goal there is, can I check you out faster? How do I get you, you know, how do I get you to, to enjoy the best part of the things you like and minimize the parts that you don't like? 
you know, and, and, and you know, Amazon's doing a great job with that, where it's like, you know, just come in, add things to your basket, walk out, you know. Right, right. It's, it's oh, gonna, you're talking it's about gonna, the uh, the cashless, like you can yes. just walk into the grocery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That's right. The, la- the last thing I want to do at the grocery store, I don't mind go- walking the aisles and picking up the food. In fact, sometimes that's a pain. If I can choose that all and, and have someone come put it in my trunk, it saves me a ton of time. You know, but at the same time, if I can just check myself out using my phone as I go and then I just leave the building, I don't have to wait in line, especially on the on the Saturday or a Sunday. Groceries are the busy Sunday mornings. You know, it's like that's a huge time saver. And time time is so valuable these days. And I think, you know, like tying that back and I'm trying to, I, I guess the non-technical like experience analogy that came to my mind is like a really, really great rest. Like I, I, I've heard this or I've read an article about this, like 11 Madison Park is this Michelin three-star uh, restaurant in New York City. And I think they go to the extent of keeping records on every one of their guests for like their whole life. Right. So they'll actually know on the second reservation made, hey, you ordered this thing. Like, how's your son? Right. Like last time you guys came over Christmas, like how Mm -hmm. was your trip? And if I have to tie that back to like our world, right, of signals and digital touch points, it, it sort of doesn't matter if it's digital or physical. How like how well are you listening to those signals? So I think for a for a brand or or someone listening in, I think it's it's capturing as much of that what are you putting out and how is your consumer responding to that to like what level of detail can you tie that to right right and then i think there's a duality there which is you know and you you touched on this in the beginning of what you said there kevin which is you got to have a strategy or a direction right like if you have a hypothesis on hey these are the things we think our customers like in this store generally in this demographic, here's the things we don't think they like, right? That data is what really allows you to validate and test that. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I mean, I almost think about it as like, how, do you, how are you the most attentive best friend? Like, how are you the best waiter or waitress at the restaurant right. knowing like what your guest is doing? And, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter. Like if it's, if they're talking to you over a mobile app, a website or by yeah. ordering things at the store, so. Right, right. But that, that's also where, you know, everyone and their mother has a, has an app, you know, and, right. and that's where we're all going because everyone wants a little piece of your real estate on your phone, the thing that you're glued to, you know, 13 hours a day or whatever. Um, but, you know, some of that, too, is opening up new ways uh, to, to reach people, right? I mean, it's like when email marketing started, oh, my God, you drive your business on email. I mean, you still can't. I mean, it's still hugely impactful. Um, but, uh, you know, the response rates and re- uh, reaction rates and engagement and, visitation and, and uh, consuming of offers and things like that in those micro messages of a push notification or an SMS. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable the difference in response rates because you can't avoid it. It's invasive, you know, but, but it's also, you know, where a lot of the privacy concerns are coming in and, you know, making sure you're balancing, you know, that customer experience, you know, email, you can spam email a little bit, not too much social. Sure. You know, I, I, I you can spam as much as you want. I mean, it's, sure. you know, as long as it's good content. But like a push notification, I mean, you've got to be very sparing on, on, on when you send that out. An SMS, the same thing, because they're so easy to turn off and they're really hard to turn back on. And at its best, right, if we're really going to it at its core, like you're doing this all in the service of like, how do you, to your point, make it the best possible experience for your consumer? Right. Right. And um, you're right. Like there is a level of like pushing that too far. Yeah. Um, you know, when you talk about trust and credibility and, and brand loyalty, right? Those things take years, decades to build, and it takes, you know, a crappy push notification flow to break. <laughs> right. You know, right? Yeah. It, it takes a couple of minutes of getting annoyed to break. But yeah. um, I mean, it's, it's kind of our, you know, responsibility in marketing. You know, I, I'm not in control of operation execution. You know, like I, I don't like in the context of a restaurant, I don't make food. Right. right. Um, I don't wait on, on the guests. And, and those two pieces are crucial to an experience. Crucial. You know, um, I, I can send people to stores, you know, uh, with media. And if it's not a good experience, they won't come back no matter what I do. <laughs> right. right. You know, and, and, and the same goes for retail. I mean, if, if you don't have good products that don't last, you, you, people aren't going to come back. It doesn't matter what you're going to say to them. Um, you know, so that, that's where it's like, you know, as you know, you as a business have to have those 
you know, nailed down or, or you know, it's, it's a certain level of expectations that a customer has. Um, and then, you know, now it's, it's our job to try to understand that and drive that, that behavior and, and, and have that recognition and be able to break through to remind people of those experiences and what they have and what they ate, uh, because those are the things that are going to, are going to bring them back. You know, it might be an offer, might be that, you know, it reminder. It's like, Hey, you like cheeseburgers. <laughs> I like cheeseburgers. Cool. <laughs> um, you know, I like cheeseburgers. Well, I think about all these cheeseburger places, but you know, it's like, you know, but, but think about us, you know, come, come to us and offer urgency. And, 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 you know, the more you can, as a business, understand what drives somebody, um, the more you can fine tune that offer so that, you know, like, like I, 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 you know, I, I may need to give a buy one, get one to one guest, but I only need to give this guy, you know, a 10% off to get him in the door. You know, and understanding those differences is, is really understanding the expectations the customer has, how I can move them. And, and as from the business side, how can I minimize my cost in doing so? Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah, just don't ask me how to do all this stuff because that's yeah. where the hard, that's where that's where it becomes real hard. You know? No, no, that's uh, listen, that's that's one brick at a time, right? But um, <laughs> right, uh, Kevin. I mean, switching gears a little bit. Um, you know, I'm thinking about the listeners that are, you know, potentially in your shoes, right? As as a a marketing executive, and it could be at any level, right? It could be a, a growth marketer, CRM marketer, somebody mm-hmm. in product. Um, you know, one of the things. I'd be interested to get your take on is, could you speak to sort of the important value, you know, as a marketer at an organization, working with people, partners, teams, sort of outside of your function um, to drive better outcomes? How, how have you sort of managed that? And, you know, I mean, it's, it's a requirement, (laughs) you know, I I don't know what to say about that. I mean, I, I think this is one of those areas for sure that is, is, it's tied into every element of the business. I mean, it's uh, all the meetings that I have. So like, um, you know, I, I launched the, uh, the Dave and Buster's rewards program um, back in November this year. Um, you, know, you were there. Yep. <laughs> uh, so, so were several other agency partners that were there, uh, technical experts, other marketing uh, uh, components and stakeholders, as well as, you know, another really important aspect, operations, you know, like you, you have to make sure that as you're introducing new experiences that, You've, you've got people that have the expertise to, uh, to design the right UI, to design the right UX, the, 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 what they see. And I'm speaking more specifically to like, you know, program mechanism, but also an app, you know, th- these days that, that will showcase that, that, that the guests will interact with. But, but it's like to also understand now what operational considerations does, does this introduce? Does it make their job harder? If it does, you're going to get no adoption because they're not going to talk about it, you know? Uh, it doesn't make the guest life easier. You know, that's, that's, you know, that's, that's marketing job and viewpoint, <clears throat> but, but it has to be stakeholders across the company. I mean, you need buy-in for, for large programs like this or for small programs, you know, like I, I want to do a happy hour special. I, I need operations to tell people about that, to help drive the attach. I need to work with my social media team to make sure the message gets out. I need to work with the creative team to create content to support that, that social media or in an email. Um, is this something I want to go find new audiences and go tell about? Okay, cool. But, you know, let's start looking, you know, working with the, um, you know, business intelligence team, which is either, you know, in-house or out-of-house to, to, you know, what are the segments? Um, like I work right now with a third party called Bridge, where they, they can sell credit card data and I can use the insights uh, to create lookalike audiences and retarget people that are doing the behaviors that I'm, that I'm looking to drive. Um, you know, so it's, there, there's, there's tools, there's people, there's all these things that kind of weave together just to kind of launch one program. In some cases, you know, it's, it's rarely me by myself, rarely. I might be able to send a push notification by myself, but I can't, I can't create creative content. You know, I, I don't, I don't run the stores, you know, I don't, you know, it, it's, it's a, it's a village for sure. You know, and I mean, look, I, you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people listening agree with that, but you sharing your anecdotes, um, you know, and emphasizing, <laughs> I mean, kind of point by point, right? Like even, and here's what I find fascinating even about, you know, what I do in customer success, right? And seeing the way all these different groups, all the different people that have to come in to make something happen. Now, data is a part of it, but it's not everything, right? It's just a means to an end. And right. Um, you're right. Like, no, if we look at the end result or the end, you know, goal of, you know, establishing a great best in class loyalty program. To your point, that doesn't happen just because, you know, you're the one wise guy in the room and you can come up with all the strategies. Maybe I'm stating the obvious, but I think it's, it's, it's 
to me, that's always one of the things that I find fascinating is just how many people in an organization have to get involved and maybe seemingly folks that you would never think are related. Like oh, I've seen legal and finance, right? Get into accounting. Yeah, I know. Oh, I know. I know. I, I spent so much, I, I spent uh, in, in launching this program, I had biweekly meetings with accounting, you know, uh, just, just to understand the impact we're, we're going to drive, how we account for points um, you know, or, or what we're transitioning into, how we count for liability for offers that we're giving out, making sure they're comfortable. Um, but there's also things like, you know, that, that you don't think about sometimes. It's like, I got to transition from something to something else. You know, what happens with the old thing? You know, there's, there's coordination with that. So there's, there's a lot of domino effects for sure, you know, as you introduce, you know, big things like a loyalty program or even just small things. Um, but yeah, technology, I mean, you know, technology product managers, I mean, Geez, uh, I would say my, um, you know, working at Dave and Buster, we spent uh, about nine months implementing, a, a, you know, that uh, the, the Dave and Buster Rewards program. And, and I would say the two people that I talked to the most, um, I mean, by far out of anyone in that company was my, uh, my, my, the senior director of store systems um, and our head of engineering, product engineering. You know, yep, yep. those, those are my biggest partners because, you know, like my, I was responsible for the the end user customer experience. And, you know, in a lot of cases, how I wanted the data to come out and be actionable, you know, so I needed to work with the people who helped coordinate the technology implementation and how those systems talk to each other, you know, um, at, at its core. And then, and then of course, the people that knew how to build those systems you know? without, without those people, I, I, you know, you just can't be like, oh, I want to buy a loyalty program and just go buy it off the shelf. You, you, you can't do that. Even with the white label experience, you, there's integrations you've got to make with with your core products. Yep. Yep. No, I mean it's um, yeah. I mean it's it's one thing. It's like these things can't happen with that cr- without that cross collaboration. But it's like yeah. you know when you have friends in those yeah. other departments and you can kind of band people together. I think that's where you know where yeah. some of the magic happens. Um, well, you know it's it's funny. It's like uh, just for uh, uh, I'm, I'm building a rewards program for uh, for Ruby Tuesday. Um, I've, I've talked to over 50 people in the company, you know, or solicited feedback from more than 50 people just in the, in the design of the program and help understand, you know, from a cross-functional perspective, you know, what's important for, from their roles and what are the, co- the considerations. And, you know, and it's also leveraging on uh, internal knowledge and history of, you know, their, themselves with the company and how it's grown over time and their understanding of the customer and what works and then now there's a whole bunch of IT resources and additional partners they got to bring on. I mean, we're, we're, I can't even tell you how many people were involved in the Dave and Buster Rewards launch, right? You yeah. Can't, can't oh, tell well, you how many people. Yeah. And I, I know I saw a, a tip of that iceberg, but just for context for everyone, that's, that's 50 people you spoke to. And how long officially has it been since you've been at, uh, uh about eight weeks. Yeah. yeah. So eight, 50 people over yeah. eight weeks, right? Um, for and, and, I, and I've, I've spent this much of my time on loyalty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. T- tiny. Yeah. Jeez. Well, Kevin, I, I realize we're already over over time a bit here, but I, I did. Yeah. I would be remiss if I didn't get to some of the fun part of this uh, game for. Well, one's a question. The other one's kind of a series of rapid fire yeses and, and nos. OK. Um. All right. So taking all the professionalism off right like forget data and, and you know all this other stuff um for you if we think about all the different experiences you've ever went through what is your favorite brand slash and or experience and why uh is, you know, like work experience or just like a company that no no as a, as a consumer, consumer as a, yep. as a consumer um you know it, it's I, I mean it just depends on the perspective you know it's like if i got to uh, go anywhere um, it, just to browse, you know, I, I, I would say like 10 years ago, it's like Best Buy. I used to love Best Buy, right? Because it had all the new technology. Now I have it at my fingertips pretty much anywhere I go. You know, it's, it's, it's all online. It's ubiquitous. Um, but, and, and it's, it's, you know, it, I mean, it's still, it's still good, but I don't know. And, and taste change, but my favorite place to go is um, I'm, I'm a big board game hobbyist too. Um, I'm super nerdy like that. The more complicated, the better. Um, but there's, there's one over here in Plano, uh, Texas that it's huge. I mean, they moved into like a grocery store, um, a while back and it's, it's got everything you can imagine. And it's just a bit wall to wall, just fun. (laughs) And it's just cool. That's, but but that, that kind of stuff I like, but, but I I like that browsing experience. I I don't like, you know, like uh, flipping through pages on Amazon. I, I like picking things up. I like looking at the back. I like imagining it in my hands, 
you know, uh, stuff like that. But uh, that's me. Awesome. Awesome. Um, all right. These are fun. They're most of them are, are, are yes or no, but, you know, feel free to chime on pylon context, but a couple maybes maybe. maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I won't, I won't let you get off that easy. No, 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 maybe. Yeah. They're, they're, we we got to get answers to these. But um, all right, pineapple on pizza. No, absolutely not. All right, we can keep talking. Um, <laughs> winter or summer sports? Summer. All right. Um, yeah, I, I, we never really got into this. Like, I, I guess I should have asked you, like, you know, favorite sport, but I figure this is still relevant. You, you keep in touch with this. LeBron or MJ? No, oh, come on. No contest. MJ. I also grew up in Chicago at that time. So I was there for the celebrations. No contest. <laughs> we're, we're three for three right now. We're, we're in alignment. <laughs> um, frozen yogurt or ice cream? Uh, I kind of go for the ice cream. Okay. Just, I don't know. Uh, Tillamook. It's uh, you know, they're known for their cheese, but they make a wicked ice cream. Right. Tillamook ice cream. Go check it out. It is amazing. Shout out to Tillamook. Okay. Um, and then last question before you go, Kevin. Um, I'm a massive foodie, uh, so I, I got to know this. Uh, favorite restaurant in all of Texas? Oh, man. Uh, I am the worst person to ask that. I am the guy that I can eat uh, ramen noodles every day for the rest of my life or even SpaghettiOs. Um, it, it, I, I always have such a hard time figuring that out. You know, I always just defer to my wife. You know, she, she's got an opinion. I don't. Um, I'm going to struggle with that every day of the week. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to punt that one. Sorry. Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. Well, listen, next time, you know, whenever we end this, uh, I don't know, whenever we're past this pandemic and we can travel again, um, I will look something up, Kevin. I promise. I won't disappoint <laughs> us. We're going to go have a nice meal somewhere in, uh, you know, somewhere you know, in South. I, yeah, yeah. Actually, you know, what? go to Dave and Buster's. Their, their, their food's killer. <laughs> there really we good. go. It's, it's fucking really good. a true pro. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Kevin, I can't, uh, can't thank you enough for this. Um, really appreciate you sharing all these insights. I think there's so much goodness here and, um, Really excited to see, uh, you know, I mean, two things, right? Both loyalty at Dave and Buster's, but, you know, what you got next and in store at, at Ruby Tuesday. So, yeah, no, it's, it's going to be fun. It's a, it's a lot of challenges, but uh, I mean, we, I think we're really set up for success. Um, so I'm really, really excited about uh, our future. So, but yeah, awesome. thanks for having me. Thank you, sir. Thanks so much for listening to this conversation from Connected by Empire. For more on this episode, you can check out the show notes and transcript on our blog. You can also subscribe to the podcast on any major podcast player. If building great customer experiences is important to you, sign up for our monthly newsletter, Mpulse, which includes a very short list of the best blog articles, use cases, and industry reads from throughout the month. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.